Every badminton player wants to be able to hit a power smash and there are tons of videos and tutorials out there that give you advice how to actually do that. In my experience there are three things that many times are overseen or that are maybe a bad advice that some coaches or players use and I want to have a closer look at the hip, the shoulder and the backswing of the racket in this video. We want to compare what the best of the best are doing to generate maximum power and also give you some advice how you can do that too. Yes, an explosive hip movement is important to generate power, but I think many people have a little bit of wrong picture of how much the hip is actually doing and how big the movement of the hip is. So many times I see people, they really trying to use their hip and then the smash looks something like this. So you see the hip ends up after the smash here in front. But now we want to have a closer look at some uh, slow motions and try to figure out how much the hip is actually moving during a full power smash. So I hope you've seen in the videos that the hip movement actually is really short. It only goes a few centimeters forward and then it already stops again. And it's not the right hip for a right-handed player is not getting in front of the left hip when you look from the side. So you also want that stopping of the movement to actually transfer the power upwards. If you just rotate through with the hip, there will be no transfer of power to your shoulders, to your arm, to your racket. And that will lose power, you will not be able to hit a powerful smash. So first, very important thing, try to stop the hip, a very small but explosive movement, and that will give you acceleration upwards to the arm, to the racket head. You've also probably got told that you have to rotate your upper body and get the shoulder forwards during the shot. This is also true, but once again, we want to have a closer look at how far the shoulder is actually moving or um, where the shoulder is during point of impact. So when you stop the clip at the point of impact and you focus on the shoulder axis, so the line from right to left shoulder, you will realize that this line is probably parallel to the net or even maybe turned a little bit away. So the dominant shoulder is further away from the net than the other one. And many players rotate way too far here, a little bit the same mistake like with the hip, because they want to use more movement, they want to rotate more, but in the end there is no transfer of power. We want to stop the shoulder movement as well, so the arm and the racket head accelerates and try to film yourself see where your shoulder is at point of impact so make a clip from the side maybe in slow motion and then see is it at the same level maybe even behind or is it too far in front that's also a sign that you're losing a lot of power here i did that mistake many years and as soon as i changed it i felt that i got so much more power and also so much more control in my smash because bringing the shoulder so far forward also leads to a very big swing and a lot of rotation in the upper body and that will also make it harder to re-get balance after your smash and be ready for the next one So I really hope you never heard the sentence get your racket head out of your backpack as a metaphor for the overhead shot. So sometimes I heard coaches saying that and they wanted a movement like this. So they wanted to get the backswing by, yeah, you want the racket here out of your backpack. And this is probably one of the worst things you can do to your overhead technique. Once again, we want to have a look at a few slow motion clips from uh, full power smashes and try to focus on what and how the backswing is actually happening in those shots. So contrary to get the racket head out of the backpack in the metaphor, there is no active backswing. So the players in the, in the video, they are not pulling the racket actively back, but they accelerate and then the racket head falls into this position. Also, if you compare 
the position where they are now to accelerate the racket is way different. Here with the backpack, my elbow is up here, the racket is really close to my back and my arm is also not rotated outwards. So what will happen now if I want to hit a shot from here, it's more like a shot put movement. So I go like this with the arm. But I want way more swing, I want way more rotation in the upper and forearm. And now if we compare this starting position or this backswing to the passive one with an explosive elbow, you can see that the forearm is almost parallel to the floor. Fore and upper arm are rotated way outwards, the racket head is pointing down and I also have a lot longer way now to accelerate in direction of the shuttle. With that backpack picture you will only separate the movement into two movements from the overhead technique. So you will get backswing, forward swing. But it should be one fluent movement. You should have a good starting position and from there on you start and the shot is just accelerating the elbow and you have a passive backswing that brings you into a good position to accelerate and hit with full power. If you want some more information and details on the smash and clear movement, maybe also some exercises and ideas how to practice it, I already made a very detailed tutorial that you will find in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and then tune in for the next video. Bye bye.